Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Traumatic Brain Injury Introduction a violent movement of the head or a blow to the head can cause damage to the brain. This is known as a traumatic brain injury or TBI. TBIs happen to about 10 million people worldwide every year. TBIs can be mild, moderate, or severe. A mild TBI may cause confusion and headache, and most people recover from it. A severe TBI can cause disability or death. A severe TBI may happen even if the head does not come into contact with a hard object. This may happen to people in car accidents and to service members exposed to the shock of an explosion. This program explains traumatic brain injuries. It covers symptoms and causes of TBIs as well as treatment options. Anatomy of the brain The brain is the control center of the body. It controls the five senses, as well as our abilities to speak and move. The brain is inside your skull. The skull is made of bone. It protects the brain from mild blows to the head. The brain floats inside the skull in a special fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, also known as spinal fluid or CSF. This fluid acts as a shock absorber, protecting the brain from blows to the skull. The brain is protected by the skull and is covered by three layers of tissue. The thickest and outermost layer is known as the dura. These membranes protect the brain and keep the CSF from leaking to the outside. The brain has two main parts, the left and the right hemispheres. Each hemisphere has specialized areas for movement, thinking, sensations, and feelings. If you injure your brain, different functions can be affected. The brain is a complex organ, and scientists do not fully understand how the brain thinks, feels emotions, and coordinates body functions. It is not always easy for healthcare providers to tell how a brain injury will affect a person's thinking, feelings, relationships, and physical abilities. Causes of TBI A traumatic brain injury is caused by a strong force, blow, or penetrating injury to the head. The leading causes of TBIs are falls and motor vehicle accidents. Other causes of TBI include being accidentally struck by a hard object, assault, and sports injuries. TBI is most common among male teens and young adults ages 15 to 24, elderly people of both sexes 75 years and older, in young people, the major cause is motor vehicle accidents. For those 75 and older, falls cause the majority of TBIs. Babies can get a severe brain injury if they are violently shaken, either because of child abuse or rough play. Shaken baby syndrome is a traumatic brain injury. Explosive blasts are a common cause of TBIs in the military during wartime. Many service members have suffered from TBIs following a blast injury. Effects of TBI The brain may move and hit the skull in accidents where the head is suddenly and violently shaken. Even if the brain does not hit the skull, the sudden movement of the brain can cause injury. This is known as shearing injury. It may cause the brain to bruise or swell. When injured brain tissue swells, it creates pressure against the rest of the brain because the skull does not expand. This makes brain swelling dangerous. It causes more pressure on the brain itself, which results in more damage to the brain cells. If the swelling and pressure is severe and it is not treated, it can lead to death. The brain is surrounded by a membrane called the dura. If an object goes through the skull and enters the dura, this may lead to a bacterial infection known as meningitis. Untreated meningitis can spread throughout the body and it can be fatal. The blood vessels of the brain can get hurt easily during a head injury. They can even burst. This causes bleeding in or around the brain. Hemorrhage is another word for bleeding. 
In some cases, the blood forms clots, also known as hematomas. Bleeding, swelling, and pressure inside the brain can also cause less blood to flow to the brain. This can cause problems in how well oxygen, blood sugar, and certain minerals are delivered to the brain cells. A sudden and violent trauma to the head also can cause diffuse axonal injury, or DAI. This can lead to long-term mental problems, coma, and possibly death. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Types of TBI Healthcare providers use different factors to tell traumatic brain injuries apart. One factor is if the skull has been penetrated. Open head injury involves the penetration of the skull, as in a skull fracture. Closed head injury does not. The injuries that happen right after the incident and those that happen later are also different. The first injuries are called primary injuries. Later injuries are called secondary injuries. Another classification is based on the severity of the TBI. Treatment and rehabilitation options depend on the severity. Healthcare providers use three categories to describe how severe a TBI is. These include mild, moderate, and severe TBIs. The Glasgow Coma Scale is a test that helps your healthcare provider figure out how severe a traumatic brain injury is. It checks your ability to follow directions, blink your eyes, move your limbs, withdraw from pain, obey other commands. Your healthcare provider gives you a score based on your test results. The maximum score is 15 points. The higher the score, the milder the injury. The categories and score ranges of the Glasgow Coma Scale are Mild TBI, which is a score of 13 to 15 Moderate TBI, which is a score of 9 to 12 Severe TBI, which is a score of 8 or less Patients sometimes lose consciousness after a brain injury. They may also have problems remembering the events right before, during, and right after the accident. Some scales determine how severe a TBI is based on how long the patient lost consciousness and how long it took them to start remembering. Symptoms A traumatic brain injury can be mild or severe depending on the extent of the brain injury. Severe TBI can cause the patient to be in a prolonged state of unconsciousness that lasts days, weeks, or months. Coma is a category of severe TBI where the patient is in a state of unconsciousness from which he or she cannot be awakened. In a person with a moderate TBI, the person loses consciousness for a few minutes or a few hours. The person may be confused for days or weeks. Changes in the person's ability to move or think may last months and can be permanent. In a person with a mild TBI, the person may or may not lose consciousness. A mild TBI is sometimes referred to as a concussion. Consciousness may be lost for a few seconds or minutes. The person may be dazed and confused. A concussion may happen after a fall at home or during a tackle at a football game. It is normal for someone who had a concussion not to remember the events right before, during, and right after the accident. Other symptoms of mild TBI include confusion, dizziness, Headache, lightheadedness, tiredness. Other symptoms of mild TBI may include behavioral or mood changes, blurred vision or tired eyes, nausea or vomiting, ringing in the ears, sleeping problems. Mild TBI may cause memory, concentration, attention, or thinking problems. These symptoms may take weeks or months to go away. Other symptoms of a TBI may include convulsions or seizures, confusion, restlessness or agitation, slurred speech. When to see a healthcare provider? Visit a healthcare provider if you or a loved one suffers a blow to the head. Seek emergency medical care if symptoms include convulsions, repeated vomiting, slurred speech, weakness or numbness in the hands or legs. Some people may not feel bad right after a blow to the head. 
but bleeding around the brain or hematoma may still happen. It may cause complications and possibly death if it is not treated right away. The healthcare provider may order a CT scan or MRI to see pictures of the inside of the brain. These pictures can help find signs of hematomas or other injuries. Even if none are found, the patient may stay at the healthcare facility to be watched closely. Complications Complications of traumatic brain injuries depend on the severity of the injury. Severe traumas to the brain, such as a gunshot, can lead to death. Most people who have a mild TBI, on the other hand, recover fully. TBIs that cause a lot of pressure in the brain can lead to serious complications, such as bleeding, blood clots, and cell death resulting from decreased blood flow to the brain. If not treated, these complications could lead to further damage to the brain. They can be life-threatening. Some complications of TBIs respond well to treatment but the brain may take a long time to fix the damage or it may never be able to fully recover. Some long-term complications of TBIs include cognitive disabilities, such as problems with memory and problem solving, personality changes, sensory problems, such as ringing in the ears and changes in vision. Other long-term complications of TBIs include headaches, seizures, post-traumatic stress disorder. Diagnosis Whether the brain injury looks severe or mild, healthcare providers usually need to assess the situation quickly to treat any complications before they get worse. They rely on images of the inside of the brain called CT scans. CT scans of the brain may be done to make sure that there are no fractures in the skull and no blood clots or bruising in or around the brain. The patient may need to stay at the healthcare facility to be watched closely depending on the patient's condition and the results of the first CT scan. If the injury is severe, the patient may need surgery right away. MRI scans may be done later to check for more subtle damage that cannot be seen on CT scans. Treatment Treatment of a traumatic brain injury depends on its severity. Mild TBIs with no signs of internal brain bleeding may require no treatment other than rest. The healthcare provider may also tell the patient or the legal guardian how to watch for signs of any complications. More severe TBIs may require hospitalization, close monitoring, and treatment. Surgery may be needed if there is an open head injury. For example, if there is a skull fracture, surgery may be needed to take out a blood clot and fix the skull. If there is a gunshot wound, surgery may be needed to clean the wound. If a bullet is still in the brain and the surgeon can get to it, he or she may also take it out. Treatment for a severe TBI may be used to stop bleeding, prevent infections, prevent blood clots, reduce pressure caused by brain swelling, in cases of mild to moderate TBIs with pressure buildup inside the brain, treatments focus on controlling the pressure, making sure there is enough oxygen to supply the brain and the rest of the body, keeping enough blood flowing to the brain. Healthcare providers may use special monitors to take a constant measurement of brain pressure. This pressure is called intracranial pressure. These monitors are known as ICP monitors. A high ICP can lead to permanent brain damage or even death. Healthcare providers may use medications to decrease the intracranial pressure. Most of these medications are given through an IV. If there is severe swelling inside the brain, a catheter is placed inside the ventricles of the brain. The ventricles are fluid-filled cavities in the brain. Such catheters decrease pressure by draining some of the cerebrospinal fluid. Surgery may be needed to take part of the skull out. This helps make space for brain swelling and reduces the pressure inside the brain. To do this, surgeons remove a piece of skull and then close the skin. The removed piece of skull usually is replaced a few months later, depending on the patient's condition. Because patients with TBI are at an increased risk of developing seizures, Healthcare providers may give patients anti-seizure medications during the first week after the injury.
The most critical time for patients with moderate to severe TBI is the first three to five days after the injury. Once the patient makes it through the critical period, the danger of death is often over and rehabilitation can start. People who have TBI may have traumas to other parts of their body. The potential complications resulting from damaged blood flow and imbalances in the chemicals of the body can cause problems throughout the body. Additional treatments may be needed. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary A violent movement of or blow to the head can cause damage to the brain. This is known as a traumatic brain injury, or TBI. TBIs happen to about 10 million people worldwide every year. When injured brain tissue swells, it creates pressure against the rest of the brain because the skull does not expand. This makes brain swelling dangerous. It causes more pressure on the brain itself, which results in more damage to the brain cells. Bleeding Swelling and pressure inside the brain can also cause problems in how well oxygen, blood sugar, and certain minerals are delivered to the brain cells. Too little or too much of certain substances can become toxic to the brain cells, causing them to die. A traumatic brain injury can be mild or severe depending on the extent of the brain injury. Severe TBI can cause the patient to be in a prolonged state of unconsciousness that lasts days, weeks, or months. Other symptoms of a TBI may include convulsions or seizures, confusion, restlessness or agitation, slurred speech. Treatment of a traumatic brain injury depends on its severity. Mild TBIs with no signs of internal brain bleeding may require no treatment other than rest. The healthcare provider may also tell the patient or the legal guardian how to watch for signs of any complications. More severe TBIs may require hospitalization, close monitoring, and treatment. Surgery may be needed if there is an open head injury. For example, if there is a skull fracture, surgery may be needed to take out a blood clot and fix the skull. The most critical time for patients with moderate to severe TBI is the first three to five days after the injury. Once the patient makes it through this critical period, the danger of death is often over and rehabilitation can start. Thank you for using Explain.